Friends, good morning. morning. And happy Easter to you. It's good that we're together to worship God this day on this resurrection day. May God be with us as we sing and give God our praise together. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked this land, weaving their identity and their spirituality intimately with the land. We acknowledge that we are on the unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. May we grow into living with respect on this land, moving into reconciliation through peace and friendship with all who live, work, and worship on it. Welcome to your service of worship for this Easter Sunday, March 31st, 2024. May God bless us as we continue to worship God this morning as we sing together our first hymn, our gathering music, number 88 for more voices printed before you. Over my head I hear music in the air. Let us sing together.
So our life and work, I must say that, uh, I will say that no one approached me before worship this morning to say they have an announcement to uh, bring forward, but I'll ask, does anyone have an announcement to bring forward on this Easter Sunday morning? Doesn't mean we're any less a busy church. We're still a busy church. Okay. So thank you to all who uh, participate in worship and all who help to make this service possible. Uh, the production team, the ushers, the lay reader and coffee hosts for bringing us today's time together. Thanks to Laurel Ralston for playing the trumpet during our service this morning. Laurel, it's good to have you back with us. There you are. <laughs> yep. If you're a newcomer, please sign our guest book as you leave and join us for a time of fellowship, uh, coffee and conversation in the Christian Education Hall following worship. And thanks to those who brought, palm cross, palm, brought plants for the cross this morning. If you would like your plant returned, place your name on the pot and pick it up after the service. The communion offering today is for Asarawit Inuit Arts, a relationship which has, which has grown out of Emmanuel's work through right relations. One of the elders was with us at the February Let's Stay Together Sunday. All right, other announcements are there. You can read them at your leisure. Please take home your, your order of service and, and treat it like a magazine on, on your side table. It is a part of your reading. It's a part of your church life. And we like to make sure everyone is well informed. All right. Let us continue our worship as we light our candles. Whenever the body of Christ gathers for worship, we light a Christ candle to symbolize the presence of Christ's spirit alive within us this day and every day. And we also light an affirm candle at Emmanuel to proclaim to the members of the LGBTQ2SIA plus communities and allies that they are truly welcomed and accepted in this place. Once again, folks, happy Easter and good morning. I'll join you later, okay? <laughs> Please join me in the responsive welcome Welcome to the sacred place of belonging, where we embrace the sacredness of life and recognize the dignity of each person, spirit filled with the image of God, the mystery in whom we have, live and move and have our being. All who have no church home, need strength, want to follow Christ, have doubts, Welcome to visitors and to new and old friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, siblings, youth, couples, and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, cultures, abilities, sexual identities, and sexual orientations, to old and young, to believers and questioners, and welcome to questioning believers. This day, we are all invited to live into God's love, peace, and justice. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Our next hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Voices United, 157.
Join me in the call to worship, followed by the prayer of approach, call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our opening prayer, let us pray. Holy One, you come to us with power beyond all knowing. You lift all things out of dust. You breathe love into every cell. You call us into communion with you, and you claim victory over death. Blessed be your holy name now and forever. Amen. I was told that this would work, and it did. Look at that. OK, come close. Do you see what Val's holding? Now, the big kids in our preteen class are going to help me a little bit today, because we have been talking about Holy Week. Now, Holy Week starts with Jesus. And I'm going to put a picture of Jesus up here. Do you think that's exactly what Jesus looked like? We don't know. You know why we don't know what Jesus looked like? Because the people who made the Bible didn't think it mattered one bit. I think they'd be pretty surprised to think we're so worried about it. So we're doing a great guess. This is what we think Jesus might have looked like. Now, Jesus went to Jerusalem in the last week of his, of his whole life on earth. So who can tell me why he went to Jerusalem? He went, he went for Passover. Thank you, Jamari. So he went to Passover. And when he, when he entered Jerusalem, everybody was very excited, and they waved. What did they wave? Palm leaves. Palm leaves, absolutely. Now, everybody was super excited, almost. Almost. So who wasn't excited at all about that? Who wasn't excited that Jesus? Uh, the, people who didn't like Jesus. the people who didn't like Jesus. Some people were very jealous about that. Some people were very jealous that Jesus was getting so much attention. But that's OK, because then he went to the temple, and everybody, everything went smoothly there, right? Everything went smoothly there. No. What happened at the temple? What happened at the temple? Yeah? Yeah, we're started. Something kind of shocking happened. What did Jesus do at the temple? There were some tables there. He flipped the tables over. Why did he flip the tables over? People were getting ripped off, weren't they? Because greedy people were changing the money and not being fair. So things aren't looking so good. But then Jesus gathered his friends together for a special meal. What was the meal called again? Remember? Pardon? The final supper or the last supper? It was the Passover meal. And by then, his friends were getting pretty freaked out. Pretty freaked out, weren't they? And then, by the end, there were so many people who were filled with anger for Jesus that he died. Now, that is not the end. People were worried that Jesus would come, would come back to life or somebody would pretend that Jesus came back to life. So what did they put in front of Jesus' tomb? A boulder or a huge rock. A huge rock. And then in front of the rock, what did they put? Guards. How many guards do you remember? Three guards. Three guards. 
So that's the end of the story, right? No, it's not the end of the story. That's the beginning of the story. Because God sent Jesus to remind us that Jesus could tell us all about God's love and what God's love was like. And God's love was more powerful than three soldiers. It was more powerful than a huge rock. It was more powerful than angry people. It was more powerful than fearful people. It was more powerful than greedy people. It was more power, more powerful than jealous people. Because Jesus came back to tell us none of that stuff, none of that stuff can stop God's love. None of that stuff is more powerful than God's love. Because we remember, on the third day, his friends went to anoint his body with what? Myrrh, that's right, with the myrrh that he got when he was a baby. And what happened? He was there. His presence was there, like a light, and people knew that God's love had beaten all of these things. There was nothing that could overshadow it. So that just left us with this light. And so today we're going to walk in that light and we're going to remember that power and we're going to remember how beautiful God's love is. That's the story of Easter. What do you think? Should we sing a song? Yeah. No? <laughs> we got one no. Okay. So we are going to sing Alleluia, 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 Praise Ye the Lord. And we're hoping you know it. So <laughs> some folks know it. So um, we're going to start in two parts. So maybe if we can... Just, if we do it all together first, and then we'll have this side do one part and this side do another part. Okay, so it's a standy uppy. So you gotta guys have to stand up, okay? Everybody feel exercised now? <laughs> we now listen to God's word. The scripture is taken from John 20, verses 1 to 18. 
The explanation of that is this. Days after the crucifixion, the disciples discover the empty tomb. They begin to spread this news, but but Mary stays behind. Jesus approaches her and begins to talk to her, but she does not recognize him at first. When she does, Jesus asked her to continue to share the same good news. Appearances of Jesus continue in the weeks that follow. Reading now from John 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken our Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener. She said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold me for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go and said to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father, your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
Thank you, Teresa and Abby and the choir for the, the beautiful music again this morning. Very moving, very uh, uplifting for this Easter Sunday. Thank you so much. Let us have a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that this morning we remember and we know that you have victory over the grave through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you for calling us here in this hour to celebrate in worship. And may the words of my mouth now and the meditations of all of our minds and hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Maybe it's the glimpse of something Christmas-like that always captivates me this time of year. How the red breast of the robin sits adjacent to the newly growing, newly greening grass at this time. Or the surprise appearance of one perched on a historic property downtown like I saw this week. For me, it's a sure telltale sign of the arrival of spring. To spot it, to see colors that we don't see, that we haven't seen for six months, is quite wonderful. Both autumn and winter have passed since we gazed these colors. The calendar had turned to a new year three months ago. It had already restarted then, in January. And now with spring gradually coming back, it seems that we too, we are restarting to be anew as the church as the body of Christ, as people of faith that continue to serve one another with love in the world. On Good Friday on CBC Radio 1, the national broadcast was anchored by CBC Newfoundland and Labrador, and the program called Some Good. Immediately I heard the double entendre. For instance, when I walk into a home where Sunday dinner is already cooking in a Newfoundland Labrador place, the fragrance of and the humidity of the steam from a large pot of salt beef and vegetable and carrots and turnips and potatoes fills the air so generously that I will probably say, my gosh, it smells some good in here, which is to say it smells very, very good or really delicious. That's what I heard how amazing something is, some good. The phrase from the Newfoundland and Labrador dialect. But it was a program about good news stories from across the network, across Canada. It's just that I don't very often hear, outside of my birthplace province, someone calling or describing something as some good. That red-breasted bird sitting on the grass is some nice to the eyes. It's a beautiful sight. It's some nice. But the purpose of the CBC Radio 1 Good Friday special was to share stories across the country that provide the listener with a sense that there is still, and here's the double entendre, some good and some good works that are happening across our land as people share love and care for one another. The some good news that Peter, Mary Magdalene, and the, disciples, and the disciple Jesus loved, that is, the other disciple in John, the news that they share after discovering the empty tomb is filled with some type of shock or bewilderment or confusion. What's happening here? How can this be? How did this tomb now become empty? They start wondering how it could be possible that Jesus' body could be taken or who might have done this. Only after Mary returns to tell the disciple the, good, the news can it be possible for them to react in such an exciting and equally as shocking way and for them and their lives to possibly restart anew and start Jesus' ministry post-resurrection. Easter allows us to re-enter that time of discovering and being informed of that amazing news of Jesus' raising from the tomb. This some good news in the historic time of the Roman Empire offers hope to the people of God, to the Jewish people that is, that this Palestinian born prophet, teacher, compassionate healer gave a message of God's love that continues to last throughout the centuries. We're the church. We're here today because 
2,000 years ago, that resurrection defines our faith, defined our faith, and it continues to define our faith. How one can die by a most cruel punishment of empire only to rise again from this brutal death is a, sign is a signature event of our faith. And whether we call it a historic event or the most powerful of interpreted historical stories, the church has been formed because of this narrative told of a time centuries ago. Brian O'Dean of St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota, reflects on this day that we joyfully celebrate every year. He says, we lift up the narratives that we are living through and tell about the characters of the story that might be going through the same things. How many of us are experiencing grief this year like Mary? Scared like the disciples? think there's no hope left, are searching for good news in the world in which hope is a declining commodity. God encounters us in our most vulnerable and lifts us up. Brian O'Dean. To be an Easter people is to proclaim Christ risen by continuing to be a people of hope. We continue and love to continue to be an inclusive people, a welcoming people. The body of Christ is a family that lovingly and joyfully continues to support and hope together. So this morning we continue with our call to proclaim Christ risen on Easter Sunday. In times that are always changing, we always do well to restart to be anew. This morning we celebrate the Lord's Supper to declare how we are made anew. As we take the bread and the cup, we are so grateful, so grateful to carry forth our call to love and serve that we remember how Jesus keeps calling us to be with his own life. How Jesus lived fully, calls us to live fully, and how to generously love all who we meet on our own journey. The robins we hear singing, the flowers we see blooming are clear signs of promise that living a life of hope brings to one another. May God bless us as we continue to do that. May Christ's teachings keep inspiring us and rising within us and throughout us. And may the Holy Spirit inspire us to continue to move and grow and learn and love one another together, now and forevermore. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we praise you this day for your generous grace that calls us forth from death into new life and new hope. And we thank you that we share faith together, O oh God, and that we are not alone. We are a community that serves to love one another. So guide us as we continue to live out your resurrecting hope, to live out our purpose as your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Next hymn, In the Bulb There is a Flower, from Voices United, 703.
Friends, with compassion for our needs, the risen one stands beside us, calling our names. Let us, with that same mercy, bring forth tithes and offerings to relieve the suffering of this world and to proclaim far and wide the good news of the resurrection life. Friends, thank you so much for continuing to give to your church to support Emmanuel United Church through putting up envelopes in the offering plate, your loose change by par, by email, money transfer. There are many, many ways to give to your church. Thank you so much through whichever means you, you, you use to make that happen, to, to give generously to your church. God blesses whatever gift you can provide, your energy, your presence here, so that our church can, be, can, can continue to grow and live out God's message in the world. Thank you so much for all that you give to Emmanuel. Our offertory prayer is printed before you. Let us pray together. Holy God, you shower us with gifts so abundant, we cannot measure them all. You give us life itself and the power to befriend our companions in this world. Bless our gifts for the sake of those in need and the spreading of your message of inclusive love for the world. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, let us take these next few moments and bring our prayers before God. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, it is indeed a glorious day, a day of sunshine, a day of spring temperatures warming up, a day of gathering your people to worship you and give thanks for our lives in this place. Thank you for all of the ways that you lift us up to be your people in this world, for all the gifts and skills and talents and abilities that you knit and stitch within us to be your people, loving one another. We thank you, O God, for Emmanuel United Church and all of us who are a part of this congregation. Bless all of us who need an extra sense of your presence this day, especially any who are sick or who are scared or who are in hospital or who are in long-term care or in our correctional facilities, any who are depressed or struggling in any way, who we, who we name to you now either spoken aloud or from the silence of our own hearts. Gracious God, you rose Jesus from the, from the tomb this day, and we thank you so much for all of the ways that you strengthen us to raise ourselves up from difficult times, to raise up one another from strife and hardship. Continue to nurture, nourish, and strengthen your people, O God, as we keep serving you faithfully, and guide us always, we pray, in the everlasting way. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, who calls us to pray together the Lord's Prayer as printed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now on this Easter Sunday morning, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. And to do that, we're going to enter into the celebration by singing together, Eat this bread and never hunger, drink this cup and never thirst, from Voices United, number 471.
friends, hear these words from Holy Scripture. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so, dear friends, we as the church gather on this Easter Sunday morning to remember what Jesus has done for us and to know that a source of strength that Jesus was in his resurrecting life, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, calls us forth to continue that strength by being the body of Christ in this world, by being the church who continue to love one another. So as we come forth this day, we remember what Jesus has done for us, and we are thankful. Your thanksgiving prayers responsive, printed before you. Let us pray together responsively. Dear friends, may God be with you. Shine forth your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise. We give our thanks and praise. In every time and every age, O oh God, it is good and faithful that, you give, that we give you thanks. For your mercy is sure and your steadfast love endures forever. In your compassion, we, you gave us Christ Jesus, who frees us from darkness and lights our path to endless renewal and life eternal. And so, with all of creation, with all the needy and hungry ones, with all, who, all those who have enough and plenty, with creatures large and small, with sun and moon and stars, and with the saints of every age, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy God, you are power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Send your Holy Spirit upon this feast, O God. May we take in your presence on earth and in heaven once more and take your presence out into one another's lives in love. On the night Jesus was betrayed, at the end of this Lenten season, our teacher took bread, blessed it, broke it, shared it among the disciples, and said, this is my body broken for you. It is our tradition at Emmanuel to hold the bread until all have been served so that we may partake together to symbolize community. All right, so we're going to, we're going to distribute the bread now and uh, wait, till, wait till everyone gets it and we will share together.
body of Christ, Ed. You. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken for the forgiveness of our sins, we eat and we remember what Jesus has done for us with thanksgiving. Amen. It is also our tradition to drink the wine as we receive it to symbolize our personal or individual response. So as soon as you receive it, you may drink it. Christ also took a cup, filled it, blessed it, poured it out, shared it among the disciples and said, this is the cup of new life. Drink and remember me.
the blood of our Lord and Je the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is poured out for the remission of our sins. It's the cup of new life. We drink and we remember what Jesus has done for us with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you. Let us join together, friends, in our prayer after communion. Let us pray. With this bread and cup, O oh God, we are filled and fulfilled by feasting. Bless us as we once again take your nourishment out into the world. Amen. Our closing hymn, Dance with the Spirit, verses two and three from More Voices, one, five, six. Friends, go from here renewed and strong, knowing that our God is alive, almighty and present. Look for the blessings that await you this week. Weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who celebrate. Tell the story of hope. And may the peace of our God, which passes all of our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May the blessing of our God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, Abide with us now and remain with us always.